Greetings. I hope all is well. And welcome to another day of story time. It is terrific Thursday and we're coming to a close of another week. So I'm here again today to bring you a story <clears throat> and you're here with Dr. Helen Tinsley. So let's begin with my little song. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine in the stories that I read every day. Welcome to another day of story. Hi, Catherine. And to all who's watching, so our story for today is Everybody Cooks Rice. And the author is Nora Dooley and the illustrations are by Peter Thornton. Everybody Cooks Rice. Everybody Cooks Rice. My stomach was grumbling. Mom was cooking dinner and I couldn't wait to sit down and eat. Carrie, will you go out and find Anthony? Dinner is almost ready. Mom is always asking me to look for Anthony. He's my little brother and he's such a moocher. If he's not playing ball or hopscotch, he's at a neighbor's house tasting their dinner. I walked outside and looked up and down the street. I couldn't see Anthony anywhere. So I went over to Mrs. Darlington's house. Anthony and I call her Miss D. She's our next door neighbor. Mr. and Mrs. D are from Barbados. It was Thursday, so their grandchildren, Sean and Stephanie were over having their favorite dinner black eyed peas and rice. At the front door, I could smell fried onions and bacon. It made my mouth water. I ate a small cup of rice and black eyed peas while Mr. D told stories about Barbados. People swim there and even go, fi and go fishing even in December. Suddenly, I remembered I was supposed to be looking for Anthony, so I asked if anyone had seen him. Sean said he'd seen Anthony going into the Diaz's house. I went there next. When I walked into the kitchen, my friend Fendra Diaz and her little brother Tito were cooking dinner because their mom was working late. Tito was telling Fendra that she uses too much spice. Fendra said Tito was checking the pot too often so the rice and pigeon peas would never cook. Their teenage brother Jose told them to pipe down. He wanted to watch TV. I looked in the pot to see what was cooking. The rice was bright yellow. Fendra told me that her grandmother in Puerto Rico had taught her to cook with turmeric. Turmeric makes rice yellow. Tito gave me a, a taste from the cooking spoon. Boy, was it delicious. Then I asked if anyone had seen Anthony. Fendra said Anthony had been there to taste their dinner, but had left to visit Dong. So I went across the street to Dong's house. Don Tran, Dong Tran came from Vietnam five years ago with his whole family, aunts, uncles, cousins, and all. Dong's oldest sister, Tam, answered the door. Mr. and Mrs. Tam, Tram work late every day, so everyone else takes turns making dinner. It was Tam's turn to cook. She was busy making the garlicky, fishy sauce called Nuk Cham. She let me try it on some rice. It was sweet and salty and sour. It tasted interesting. Later, when Mrs. Tam gets home, she'll make fried rice with peas. Then when Mr. Tran gets home, everyone will sit down and eat together. When I asked if anyone had seen my brother, Dong said Anthony had been helping Miss Hua and Mi Li with their groceries. The Huas lived on the corner, so I started to walk up the street.
Oops. What's in the bag? Carrie, wait up, someone called. It was my friend Raji. He was carrying three round metal boxes all clipped together. Something inside smelled delicious, so I asked him what it was. Raji said his parents were working at their video and gift shop, so he was bringing them leftovers in a Tiflin carrier. There was a big party at the Krishma Thursa house last weekend, so Raji's mother cooked a fancy, full, a fancy colorful Indian dish called Bir biryani. It's made with peas, cashews, raisins, lots of spices, and a special kind of rice called basmati rice. I had tasted biryani at Raji's house the last time I went looking out for Anthony. When I told Raji that I was looking for my brother again, he said Anthony and Mili were blowing bubbles out a window of the Huao's house. The Huao's came from China a year ago. Mrs. Huao is just learning how to speak English. We smile at each other a lot. Mrs. Huao was steaming white rice for her family and the boarder who lives in the back room. She was also making tofu and vegetables in the wok. That's a big pan with a round bottom. Mrs. Huao always makes, some, makes, me, makes me sit down and eat something when I come over. Everyone at the Hua's house uses chopsticks. Mei Le, who is only three and a half years old, can even pick up a single grain of rice with her chopsticks. Mei Le laughed at me when I tried using chopsticks and dropped some vegetables. She said Anthony was bye-bye, so I, tried to I decided to try our backyard neighbors, the Blues. The blues are from Haiti. Their cat just had kittens, so Anthony wanders over there a lot. Mrs. Blue teaches English at the community center. We get to call her Blue. Madame Blue speaks three languages, French, English, and Creole. When I walked in, Madame Blue was making a Creole-style Haitian dinner. It had hot peppers, chives, red beans, and you guessed it, rice. Monsieur Blue works two jobs, so he won't get home too late. Madam Blue says the pot will stay on the stove and the rice will get tastier and spicier. Adeline and Jean-Marie Blue came home from dinner on their break from their after-school jobs at the grocery store. They helped themselves to bowls of rice and beans from the pot and gave some to me. I thought my mouth was on fire. Jean Marie teased me when I gulped some water. It was getting late and I still hadn't found Anthony. Adeline said she had seen him with a kitten in his arms climbing the fence to our yard. I said thanks and au revoir. That means goodbye and hurried home. When I walked in the house, Anthony was showing the kitten to our baby sister, Anna. He was explaining to mom that he was only borrowing the kitten. Mom was putting dinner on the table. Her grandmother from Northern Italy taught our grandmother, who taught mom how to cook Reese EBC, rice with green peas. Mom puts butter, grated cheese, and some nutmeg on it. It smelled so good, but my stomach wasn't grumbling anymore. I told mom I was too full to eat. Anthony said he wanted to eat his dinner even though he was full because he loves rice and that ed that afternoon he found out that everybody cooks rice. And in the back of the book, they give you all the rice recipes. Black eyed peas and rice, turmeric rice with pigeon peas, nuke chum, fried rice, uh, uh, Indian rice, tofu with vegetables, rice and beans, and Reese Reese BC. So this is the story of Everybody Cooks Rice. I hope you enjoyed it. It made me hungry. 
So hello to everyone that's joined us. Hello to my uh, classmate, Philip Epolito. Yes, I'm getting ready to go work out, Philip. Got my, got my gear on. I bought an exercise bike. We have to stay healthy while we're in the house during this coronavirus. Stay productive, keep your mind active, but you gotta get your body moving. So you know what? I pulled out my hula hoop. I'm gonna do that in the backyard and I'm going to um, ride my bike. Thank you, uh, cousin Latasha. Yes, we cook a lot of rice too. Hi to Latasha, my cousin Lisa and Catherine. So I have two of my cousins that logged on and my classmate, Philip Epolito. Hello to all of you. Yes, the story is wonderful and the, um, the recipes are great in the back of the book. So when I taught young children, we used to cook some of these recipes in the um, crock pot at school because you didn't have a stove. So you had to be creative. But I hope you enjoyed the story and um, stay well, be safe, stay in. Those of you in Georgia, don't listen to this foolish governor telling people to go out. It is not safe to be out. Nail salons, barber shops, hair salons, and tattoo parlors are all business, for businesses that require close, close physical contact. It is not safe. Use your head. Don't be foolish. Be well, and I'll see you tomorrow at the same time, same place, five o'clock. Peace.